grace, mercy, and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. And we We fall.
Uh, sorry for you in the cheap seats up there, as you can't see me, but that's probably a blessing, to be honest. Uh, but it's good to have you out at worship this morning. Uh, for those who are watching online or in DVD, you trust it. While you're not here physically with us, you'll know the blessing of God uh, as you listen to the service. I want to welcome Werner to our uh, service this morning. There he is. Uh, Werner is speaking on behalf of Tear Fund, and uh, you'll hear more about him later on. Uh, and Janice is going to be leading it, so once I get the announcements out of the way, um, she'll be taken over from, from there. I just want to say thanks to all. There's others taking part, as I said last week, and, and I want to thank those today in, in advance for volunteers. To, to read and pray and, and do children's talks and so on as we, we move forward. Ah, thank you, you, do, you two, for that little song. Lovely to get our minds focused that we come to a holy God, and we're going to be doing that a little bit more. So that's an encouragement for you to be here on time, maybe a wee bit early. Um, we are, we're going to be doing a wee bit more praise uh, before the service formally starts. Got your announcements. There's tons of them. That's why I printed them out again. We're really kicking off. Life is picking up and getting incredibly busy. Elders, we meet on Tuesday at 8 p.m. in the park room. And then Wednesday, friends are recommencing this Wednesday from 10 to 12. Uh, so ladies, get your, dust your knitting needles off and, uh, and come back again on a Wednesday. It's open to all ladies uh, for a time of, of fellowship and, and chat and, and, and other different stuff. Prayer meeting on Wednesday at 8 p.m. As you see, GB commences this week. Details are there at the time. Slight change in the time, so please read that carefully. And then next Sunday, we're back here, Sunday school before the service, and then our, our, our worship service at its usual time. And Connect restarts next week. Our youth fellowship commences next week. Anybody near it, upwards, is very welcome to come along. You're heading to the beach in Waterford, apparently. Hopefully the sun will shine. If it doesn't, you'll do something else. Uh, we're leaving here at 6, returning for 9 o'clock. Uh, so parents, when you drop your children off, can you make sure you sign a consent form for Connect this uh, year. And if you have any questions, grab any of the leaders. Uh, a couple of fancy Tuesday Fellowship is starting uh, on Tuesday week. Uh, if you don't know what Tuesday Fellowship is, I think you 50 plus, roughly. Uh, if you're over 50, you're very welcome to it. Talk to Hugh uh, if you want more details, and all the details are there for the first day back. And then PW have asked me to remind you ladies of your breakfast on the 24th. Uh, from 9.30 to 12, Saturday the 24th, in uh, the Adair Arms. I have there speak to Charlene. This here has all the details. Speak to Janet Robinson uh, uh, and get your money in for that morning out. And then finally, I uh, received a little thank you card. Uh, thank you for all your support for Food Bank. We appreciate your generosity so much. We could not do it without your help, and that's from everybody at the Food Bank in, in Bali, Lochan. So indeed, thank you for it. Uh, thank you to uh, Jennifer, who coordinates it and uh, does logistics and delivers it, but thank you for all your generosity. And if you wonder, in this day and age, in this country, is it necessary? Have you got your guardian this week? If you haven't, go and buy one. Let me read the headline, Breadline Balamina. There's a grim, and then the subtitle is A Grim Analysis of Situation in Local Area Issued by Christians Against Poverty. That's, a, that's an organization that helps people with their finances who are struggling. And they are saying the situation is not great in Balamina. So thank you for what you do for the food bank. And I would encourage you, and I know finances are being squeezed with the cost of living. But if you can do anything, please continue to support uh, the food bank in this area. Now... Janice, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks for leading us in worship this morning. Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to welcome you all to this Tear Fun Sunday. You're all very welcome. It's great to see such a great crowd out. Things are getting back to normal. It's great. And I'd like to welcome a special welcome to our, our speaker today, um, Dr. Werner Michael-Wayne. Werner is a retired consultant physician from Newton Ards, and he has been a speaker with Tear Fun for several years. He was on a healthcare transform team which went to India in 2009 and he continued to visit India and to see the work of the Duncan Hospital at Bihar State. But Werner's going to tell you more about himself later and we look forward to what you have to share with us, Werner. Thanks again for taking time to come to, to meet with us in First Brashen today. So, 
We're here to worship God and let us all join together and sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Richard. Uh, let us pray. Lord God, we bow humbly and reverently in your presence. Lord, we are unworthy to come before you, but we do so covered in Jesus' precious blood. Lord, we have failed you many times in the past week and asked for forgiveness for our many sins. 
We thank you, God, for a time of rest and recharging over the past summer months. We thank you for family holidays and time spent together. We thank you for the fantastic summer weather and for, for many crops safely gathered in. Lord, we give you thanks for the return of Sunday school this morning and Bible class. We thank you for the safe return of the children and teachers. And Lord, we also remember Andrew this morning before you. We pray that you will continue to sustain and heal Andrew. And we lift Colm and Ruth before you as well. Lord, we pray for all who would take part this, in this morning's service. And we pray that the service would give you honour and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we ask all these things. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Colin's going to read for us now from Psalm 104, verses 1 to 28, and Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40. Thanks, Colin. Psalm 104, verses uh, 1 to 28. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. He lays the beams of his chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He rides on the wings of the wind. He makes his messengers winds, his ministers a flaming fire. He set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. <clears throat> you covered it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. They give drink to the, every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Beside them the birds of the heaven dwell. They sing among the branches. From, from your lofty abode you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted, in them the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the rock badgers. He made the moon to mark the season. The sun knows it's time for setting. You made darkness, and in the night, when all the beasts of the forest creep about, the young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they steal away and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and his labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, things, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan, which you have formed to play in it. These all look... These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. And when you open your hand, they are filled with the good things. Well, you're right, you're right. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and all the prophets. Thank you very much, Colin and Maeve. That was a nice surprise. Thank you, you did really well. Fantastic. So I'd now like to ask Werner to come and address the children. Thanks, Werner. It's great to be with you in uh, Rashid and to see the kids, but I'll have to gather them a wee bit closer because I'm going to need a little bit of help this morning. So maybe the kids can be round here or maybe even in front. Some of them. Oh, this is great. <coughs> now, 
Now, I'm, I'm, well, if you look at me, you see that I'm very, very old. Because I was born in 1951, so I'm very, very old. But you're very, very young. I wonder who the youngest here is. Anybody one year old here? No? Anybody two years old? Three? Four? Anybody four? Five? Anybody five years old here? Yes. Okay. And your name is? Alfie. 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 Would you like to help me this morning? If you just come to your feet. And do you see this bag that I have here? you see this bag here? I want you to take it in your hand. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I want you to take it away down there if you can. Can you carry that away down there? And then you just leave it there. That's great. Well done, Alfie. I think Alfie needs a little round for doing that. <clears throat> now, who else was five? Somebody else was five. And your name is? Tech. Jack. Jack, do you want to take this? This time we're going to go in this direction here. So you take this one here. Oh, what's that? Ah, come on, Jack. I think Jack's going to need a bit of help from some, somebody who's big and strong and, and really muscly. And your name is? Matthew. Matthew, you look. I have a grandson called Matthew. So, Matthew, you look as if you're... Let's see your muscles. There we are. Come on. You give him a hand. You take that bit there. And you head off in that direction. And off you go. And then you just leave it at the back there. And back you come, Jack and Matthew. And they need a wee ripple as well. <clears throat> now I am here to talk about Tear Fund. And what Tear Fund does is they help people who have heavy loads to carry. And we're going to think about a, a lady this morning who's called... You with Tanze, Leonel. You with Tanze, Leonel. Anybody got a you with Tanze in their class? No. What about a Leonel? Anybody got, no, you don't have a Leonel in your school? No. No, because she lives, well, she doesn't live in Brookshire. She lives in Rwanda. And uh, now, anybody know which continent? Rwanda is in, it's the country of Rwanda, and it's not in Europe. Anybody know which continent might be in? What about the grown-ups? How, how, how are you on geography? Rwanda's in? Africa. Yes, it is. And it's in Africa. It's a long way away. Now, <coughs> Leonel, what happened? She was involved in a traffic accident, a car accident, and she damaged her spine. And she has to go about in a wheelchair. And that's sad. So she's got a disability. But she also lives in a very poor country. In a poor continent of Africa. And so what Tear Fund do? They come and help through the local church. And they partner with the local church. And that has helped Leonel. So she now runs... Uh, helps running in a little business. They've gathered the ladies together. They're a little business. And she can look after her two sons so much better. Now they have, she has a partnership. So that's really what it is. It's that heavy load. And Jack could manage it. But with Matthew's help, they were able to partner and carry the heavy load. And that's really what Tear Fund is all about. <coughs> of course... Uh, Leonel goes to church in Rwanda and her real partner is Jesus. And, you know, life can be difficult and especially when you grow up and so on. Life has difficulties and we need Jesus not only for salvation but to be our partner in life and then to take us where he is so wouldn't you like to have Jesus as a partner in your life 
to save you and to walk with you and to help carry your burdens and to take you home. So we're just going to pray about that now, okay? So we'll close our eyes and we'll fold our hands and we'll just pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this world that you've made and the world that teems with life and even the sea, there's more life in the sea than there is on the land. It just teems with life. And yet, it's a fallen creation. It's a broken creation. It doesn't function as it should. And people are in need. And we thank you for the Lord Jesus who has come to restore us to relationship with God. And to be our partner in life. And to take us home to be with him. And so we think of the kids this morning. We pray that each one in their heart will have Jesus as their saviour and their partner in life. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I think all the children now need a wee dimple. Thank you for listening so well. And then they're off to wherever. Then the children will leave for children's church. So it's our God is a great big God. Thank you. I'm sure you'll all agree it's great to have Ronnie uh, amongst us again. So Ronnie's going to lead us now in prayer. Thanks, Ronnie. Let's bow uh, to the Lord as we come uh, and bring the needs of others uh, to him. Let us pray. Lord, your word encourages us, us to bring everything to you in prayer and to not worry about the situations that encounter we encounter in life we are told do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that your requests be made known to god and father we bow before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts thanksgiving that that indeed we can come before you We've been reminded earlier that we are an unworthy people. We have no right to come before your throne of grace. We have no right to bow before you and call upon your holy name or to speak to you as our heavenly father. Yet by the death and resurrection of Christ, Lord, that curtain was torn and we have access 
to your nearest presence. And we know you love to hear your children pray. And so this morning, we take this time and this service of worship to bring the needs of our congregation, our nation, and our world to you. Father, we think about our congregation. We know, Lord, that we have people who are unwell at the minute, those who are at home struggling with illness, those who are in hospital struggling and waiting for treatment or recovering for treatment. We know there are those who are burdened, worried about family, jobs, finances in this time of cost of living pressures. We know those who are bereaved and miss loved ones and are struggling with that. Father, we commit them to you. We can admit them to you because you are the God of all comfort. You are the almighty God who can give us strength to do all things through Christ. You told your servant Paul that your grace was sufficient for all of his needs and that is true for us as well. Father, you are the one who gives peace that passes all understanding, not as the world gives, but only that you can give. And so, Lord, for all who are, are struggling in whatever way at the minute, those who are being weighed down by the challenges of life and who cannot, in their own power, lift their eyes to see you, the sovereign God who is watching over them and is in control, Father, come and fill them with your spirit. Lord, help them to lean upon you, the one who will partner with your children and walk through those difficult times. And Father, for the congregation as a whole, <clears throat> Our long list of announcements this morning as activities start to, to kick off again uh, after a tough couple of years. And we thank you for that. We thank you for these opportunities to meet together for fellowship and, and Lord, for encouragement and for uh, feeding upon your word. And, uh, and Lord, all that they, these activities mean to us. And so we pray, Lord, for all the leaders, all the, those who are organizing and planning and who will be up the front leading and doing things. Father, we pray for encouragement. We pray for great strength. We pray for great wisdom. And we pray, Lord, at the forefront of all that we do, that will be done for the glory of your name, the uplifting of the name of Christ, who is the saviour of all. Father, we pray for our, 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 our nation. We pray right across the UK. And Father, at the time when the news that is dominating uh, our, our headlines is the economic crisis. Father, this cost of living situation that is impacting on people's homes. As we're heading into winter, more and more people are having to debate, do they keep their house warm or do they have food on their table? Father, well, we have businesses who are struggling, whose heating and electric bills are climbing to such a phenomenal rate that many are starting to shut down because they can't justify the price rises to cover their costs. Father, our public services will suffer. For we know that it's going to be pressure on central funds and therefore our services, our health service, our, our schools, um, Lord, our, our, our roads, uh, Lord, our, our, our domestic services are all struggling because the money is not there. Father, we pray for our politicians who are at the forefront of this battle and are in a very tough situation. What do we do? How do we help? How do we ease the burden the financial burdens on our our, our, our society it's tough it's difficult uh, and lord we probably we wouldn't want to be in that situation so father we pray for them as you command us to do so we pray that you will give them great wisdom great wisdom ears that will listen to to all the information and all the facts and lord great wisdom to know how to act and to make decisions that will uh, help the people in the streets but we pray for our new prime minister who will be announced tomorrow again we pray for wisdom we pray for strength we pray for compassion we pray for honesty and integrity to the one who will lead parliament into the future and father all that is going on gone are the days when our leaders would have called the nation to a time of prayer and national crisis but Father, we are the church. It should be us who should be calling people to a time of prayer. It's us who should be setting the example, Lord, and bowing before you, seeking your blessing, seeking your mercy and your grace. 
for we have the message of hope. That hope is found in Christ. So Father, in these difficult times, help us to stand up and be counted and proclaim your glory with grace and love. And finally, Lord, for the wider world, uh, the Ukraine still in a terrible situation. The war, the conflict, the loss of life, the fear, the uncertainty. Uh, we pray, pray that you would intervene for it. It is only you who can truly intervene and change the situation because you're the only one who can change the hearts of men. Father, for the devastating floods in Pakistan, which are, are barely making our mainline use. Hundreds upon hundreds have died. Communities devastated. People displaced. Father, we thank you for the likes of Tear Fund and many other organizations who will be striving to get in there and bring urgent help. Father, we pray that you would resource them. Father, that you would open the roads and the pathways that they can get into these distraught communities. Bring that practical help, but also bring it in the name of Christ. And so, Father, we do thank you for this time. Thank you that we can come to you in confidence. And if we ask anything according to your will, you will hear us. And so, Father, we have brought these requests. We trust we are walking in your will. We trust that what we have asked of you, Lord, uh, you will answer and bring glory onto your name. And, Father, now as we come to praise you, I need to listen to the work of Tear Fund. Father, give us ears that will hear and hearts that will accept your truth as you speak to us, O Lord. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Ronnie. Before I ask Werner to come and, and speak for us or with us, um, we're going to worship God in the lovely hymn, uh, Speak, O Lord.
So I'd just like to thank everybody that took part in the service today, to Colin and wee Maeve and Richard and Ronnie and of course Richard and Amy, thanks very much for leading the music and our technical team, uh, Stephen and Gareth and Noel. Thanks everybody and Werner if you'd like to come up and lead the rest of the service, thank you. Just find extra things to do when on your way up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now it's really lovely to be with you all here in Brushane on this Sunday morning, this Tear Fun Sunday. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation for me and for Tear Fund to be with you at this time. And we're grateful for your wonderful support for Tear Fund and having us last year in November when Karen Craig was the speaker. And through your previous donations, Tear Fund partners and local churches have been able to distribute food, they've provided shelter, they've been able to generally serve their communities in times of severe need. So next slide. Following Jesus where the need is greatest. In 1968, the Evangelical Alliance Relief Fund Committee met for the first time to form a vision for a new organization which would become Tear Fund. And its aim was to marry Christian compassion with practical action to meet needs around the world. Tear Fund called for a, a new and radical understanding of the gospel as a message that truly was good news to the poor. As Jesus has, origin, has originally described it, the new emphasis was on caring for people's physical and spiritual needs. Now, I don't know whether you remember the days of the black and white television because I remember when we didn't have a television but we, we eventually we had a black and white television and the services ended about 10 o'clock national anthem and then the screen went white and then it just collapsed and there was just a wee white dot in the screen and how sad we just watched the white dot until it disappeared and then we went to bed so I don't know whether you've ever watched the white dot until it disappeared. But those were the days of uh, Biafra. And uh, uh, there was a terrible secession, a civil war in Biafra, a famine. And those pictures arrived, black and white as they were, but they arrived of children starving and in great need. And there was such an outpouring of of compassion and sympathy and wanting to do something that people just sent money in the post and wrote checks and sent it to uh, the Evangelical Alliance and I said what, what, what will we do? Well we'll set up a fund and that's really where Tear Fund began in a crisis in Nigeria and we still need Tear Fund because the crises haven't ended. I learned a new word Yesterday, perma crisis, you're just one crisis to another crisis to another crisis, and COVID and war in Ukraine and cost of living and floods in Pakistan. We're just a world in crisis. But what about my own connection with Tear Fund? So, next slide. This is what Tear Fund's about long term sustainable development. Next and responding to disasters, next. Advocating for change, next. So here is me in India, next slide. And I'm visiting a hospital that belonged to the Association of Hospitals that we've heard, you've heard about, uh, Duncan Hospital. And the community work is supported by Tear Fund, and that's in Bihar. So this is Herbert Per. Christian Hospital near Dehradun in Uttarakhand. 
Uh, next slide. And it's a fellowship of churches transforming communities through caring. That's uh, their aim, Evangelical Hospital Association. And Tear Fund support the community work. So next slide. So we're going to join the church service in Herbert Poor Hospital uh, in 2020. So let's go. You might have got the word Yeshu there. So they were singing about Jesus um, and praising his name in the hospital grounds while they cared for patients. So this is Dr. Matthew. He's the uh, head director and an orthopedic surgeon in the hospital. So next slide. And this is what one of the wards would look like. Um, the masks are on and so on. And next slide. And uh, because of the orthopedic work, uh, the uh, victims of uh, childhood uh, developmental abnormalities and accidents. And they have uh, a Saturday morning, um, they bring the disabled uh, children together, disabled adults as well. Next slide. And uh, now we're in the high dependency unit. Um, we've got a patient with a, a mask on. Now, you'll remember a COVID and um, CAP, continuous process. CPA, continue positive airways pressure, CPAP. And you'll remember seeing these masks in, in those days. It was on our screens. So this is a lady having CPAP, non-invasive ventilation. Um, not with COVID, but with uh, another condition. So here's a second patient. Uh, she is a, has taken a drug overdose. And that's a common thing in, in India. The pressure of life, responsibilities, uh, overdose. And uh, because it's an agricultural community, insecticides, pesticides are easily available, as they are in any country here. So um, unlike here in Northern Ireland, where paracetamol is the number one poisoning agent after alcohol, then um, they have uh, um, insecticide uh, poisoning. So fortunately, uh, this lady did quite well after being ventilated in ICU. Next slide. So we're going to take a wee trip up because uh, Herbert Poor is near the, it's flat, but it's near the Himalayas. And we're just going to go up the road. Next slide. And there we are in the foothills of the Himalayas. And Dr. G is there and his friend. And there's snow. And uh, it's magnificent to look at. But it's poor. Next slide. So this is Dr. Allen and his family. He's a physician there. And I was there for a week and we were discussing cases and so on. Next slide. But we'll have to say goodbye to India now and we're going to do another place. No, next slide. So, um, poverty. Um, what is poverty? What words or phrases or images or perhaps experiences come to your mind when you think of poverty. And maybe your thoughts go to money, or debt, or economic hardship, cost of living. And certain parts of the world might come to mind. You think of sub-Saharan Africa, and you think of hunger, and powerlessness, and suffering, and injustice, and just the need to survive. The World Bank defines people in poverty as those living on less than $1.90 a day. $1.90, about $1.50 a day. It's a useful benchmark, but it's an incomplete picture because so much needs to be addressed more than simple income. In the past, charities and governments have tried to end poverty around the world, and but it didn't really seem to change. People and nations stayed poor, and 
you can see what is poverty is an important question to consider before you try and help to get it right. So what is poverty? And this is where um, tear fund come in. Charities and governments have often been accused of simply throwing aid or putting aid to people in poverty. Cash assistance does make a huge difference in the lives of individuals and communities, um, but it can't solve poverty alone. To address the root problems, we need to go deeper. We believe poverty has its roots in broken relationships. That's where poverty comes from, broken relationships. It's a broad biblical understanding and it helps us to think more clearly about a truly biblical response. So Tear Fund seeks to follow Jesus where the need is greatest. But that doesn't mean there's no need on your doorstep here in Brookshane. You have a food bank and Balamina is a place of poverty. And Newton Ards, we, we're part of a food bank too in Newton Ards. Newton Ards is a place of poverty. But just as Christians Against Poverty can't say it's not just the amount of money in the budget or the lack of it's how you manage your budget and it's how you respond to being or feeling poor. So for Tear Fund, yes, there's there's work to do at home for for you and for us in Newton Arts, but there's work to do where the poverty is the need is really great. And it is possible that extreme poverty can be ended. There has been a 25% reduction in extreme poverty up until the time of the COVID pandemic. Of course, now it's perma crisis, so it, it's not easy. So Tear Fund's work is in three main areas, responding to disasters, developing communities and mobilizing the church. And Tear Fund helps communities find long-term solutions to hunger, drought, and lack of opportunity and self-esteem that keeps them trapped in poverty. Low self-esteem. I'm poor, therefore I'm always going to be poor. It'll never change. And by showing people the skills that they actually have themselves, and doing this through church and God's word, we help to unlock their God-given potential with lifelong results. Just with the kids there, um, I could have taken the, the heavy weight down there. But actually, when they realised they got up and muscle themselves, if they came together and worked together, they could get the load to its destination. And that's really the key. And that brings lifelong results. Beginnings with the church and Tear Fund partners, which hundreds of thousands of churches worldwide, and the whole person. This is an approach that can change whole communities. Tear Fund believes the church is the best place and best place to respond. Not just because they're already present and they know their community, just as churches in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, should be consulted because you know the community, you know the needs. But just because they're already present, they know their community, but because they know people and the need for whole transformation. We need spiritual, physical and social transformation. So there's responding to disasters, there's developing communities and mobilizing the church, there's changing unjust policies and Tear Fund works with supporters and partners to influence powerful decision makers around the world and we encourage everyone to alter their own lifestyle as a way to love our neighbor. We can do something. So we can see that poverty is not God's plan. That reading in Psalm 104, just the, the oceans teeming with life and the variety of it, but it's, um, things are not in harmony. Scripture tells us that God made a good world when things were in harmony. And poverty, therefore, is a result of brokenness of the sin that is in the world. And specifically, there are four relationships which we need to think about which have been broken in our world. And we see the evidences in Scripture itself from the very first pages to the very last. So the first relationship that's broken is the relationship with God. 
We're following our own way and not God's way. And of course we know that this dates back to Adam and Eve in the garden where they decided we'll do it our way. That tree looks nice. We'll, we'll have that fruit. I know God said no, but then what does God know? We know it's good for us. Looks good, doesn't it? And of course it brought a broken relationship with God. So this fact, our rebellion from God, impacts every single element of life on this earth. Creation itself groans under the weight of our sin and the weight of sin as a principle. And along with God's people, creation longs for redemption and restoration. And we know that there are broken relationships in our families, in our communities, in our nation, even in our churches. Broken relationships. And it stems from a broken relationship with our creator, God. So recognizing this, of course, gives us a wonderful opportunity to be amazed at Jesus. Because what did he preach in his broken world situation? The gospel of good news, a restored relationship with God which then restores our relationships with one another. So, the bro a broken relationship with self is the second thought. And, and identity has become all important in our society. And we need constant affirmation from others as to our value and worth. And this is especially true for young people. And we know about self-harm we know about suicide amongst teenagers, um, and it may be sadly personal to someone here. But even for adults, this has become true, so that the commonest cause of death for men up to the age of 50 is suicide. It used to be heart disease, and when I was in the Waveney Hospital down the road, Charlie Wilson, the physician, was very busy, a very busy unit, a lot of heart disease. But I was amazed, staggered, that it's actually suicide now, up to the age of 50 for men. And um, so poverty, as I asked you to think about, it refers to answers not just about physical and material things, lack of food, lack of shelter. If you ask someone who lives in poverty what it's like, we didn't always ask them, of course, we knew better. But if you ask them, what's it like to be poor? It's the shame, the shame of being poor. It's the powerlessness. It's the hopelessness. It's a dependency it's a fear it's more than physical or ma um, physical and material um, reality and the shame hides the truth that men and women do have dignity they do have worth and it's inherent in the fact that they're made in God's image and without this understanding without addressing this Many people view themselves in ways which make them powerlessness, powerless to lift themselves out of poverty. So we have a broken relationship with ourselves when we have a broken relationship with God. And then we have a broken relationship with others, God, ourselves, others. Uh, we're in conflict with each other, and that's easy to see in our present world. And we know in Matthew 22 that we are asked to love our neighbours as ourselves, but often we don't care so well for our neighbours, either globally or even locally, because, well, we, we are broken people. Um, we sometimes view people as other, the other side, the other community, and that can make it harder to reach them. And here in Northern Ireland, well, we know about 
seeing people as others and conflict. And we know where brokenness leads to. And these create conditions which keep people in poverty. There are more conflict situations today among people, groups and nations than ever in our recorded history. Today it's not better, it's worse. So a broken relationship with God, a broken relationship with ourselves, a broken relationship with our neighbours, a broken relationship with creation. And we are damaging the creation that God made. Uh, COP26 was held in Glasgow and changing, damaging changes are accelerating and there's no easy solution but we'll see a bit more about changing situations. We're going to meet Leona and her family in Rwanda in just a moment. So I'll introduce you to Leona in, in this. Um, so some Rwanda facts, they're up on the screen there. There's where Rwanda is in Africa. <laughs> And uh, it's a landlocked country. 40% of Rwanda's population still live in poverty. 40% depend on agriculture. And they're vulnerable groups such as older people or people with disabilities like Leonin. And they may not be included in social and economic programs within the community. So her story shows Tierfund's uh, work with church and community transformation. CCT, that's it. Um, church and Community Transformation. So over the last 30 years, Tearfund has helped develop processes, train facilitators and take local churches on a journey to receive this community and church transformation. So we'll see the DVD now from Uwe My name is Uwe Lionel. And this is my story. I had a car accident 20 years ago that left me paralysed and unable to walk. I rely on other people to help me, including my two sons. They have given up so much to care for me, but it's difficult when they're not around. I long for them to have the future they deserve, but with so little money, I haven't been able to help. As a person living with a disability, even moving from one place to another is difficult. If we are lucky, we get food to eat. When we don't, we wait for God to provide another way. For so many, extreme poverty and disability would feel insurmountable, but not for Leonil. Thanks to the work of Tiafon's church partner in Rwanda, she was inspired to start up a group for people living with disability. Together saving, learning and starting up small businesses. The impact of coming together has been extraordinary. We have been meeting for four years, saving together and building friendships. We give loans to people who need them and together we have bought a machine to make sweaters. We have one member who knows how to use the machine and has been able to train the rest of us. We're able to work together as a group to create enough sweaters to sell in a short time. We have also received orders from a few schools that wish to work with us, providing uniforms for children. When the pandemic hit, life became more difficult. It was harder to sell and food became more expensive. But the group pulled together even more, using their savings to ensure everyone had the food and support they needed. They are now expanding their businesses and rebuilding their savings. This group has helped me a lot. Not only have I received funds from the jumpers, but I've also been able to get a loan to start a small-scale poultry business with my son. We began with a few chickens, but as you can see, they're increasing in numbers. The eggs also provide protein for me and my children. As the business grows, we will be able to sell more at market. More than simply providing an income, self-help groups like Leonil's provide a place of faith and community, a place of hope, where members can learn and support each other. The group has contributed a lot to my well-being. 
It is a blessing to me. It saved me from loneliness. When we meet here once a week to learn the Word of God, support each other and listen to testimonies, we go home as renewed and hopeful people. The Word of God unites us. When you change positively, you influence people around you to do the same. The church helps us in a spiritual way. Due to the hardships I went through, there was a time when I wished I had died in the accident. But God has been good to me through these groups. When I talk with others and read the Word of God, my hope is restored. With your support, we can help more people like Leonil to beat poverty and find community. Together, we can beat poverty. So, there's hope for Leonel in her story. And, um, next slide. So, um, here's Tavron's mission statement from a pastor in the Democratic Republic um, of Congo. Community transformation work is needed because it's the church going to where the people are. That's what Jesus did. He was out there with the people more than he was in the four walls of the temple. That's the mission. We need to go where people are rather than calling them to come where we are. We need to combine the message of the Bible with actions. The church is God's chosen vessel to transform lives. Corinthians or Colossians 1 and 20 says that through Jesus' death, he's made a way for all things, all of creation, everything on earth and in heaven, to be reconciled with God. So next slide. So how are we to respond? Now pray, act, give. There are so many ways that we can pray, and you've already been praying. We've already been praying this morning for poor people here and and that God would be in the situation. We've been praying for ourselves too. We've been worshipping God and keeping our relationship with God uh, vibrant. And we can ask, we can act, and ask God, how can I help? Um, and we can give. Next slide. And there are different ways of, of giving as you already have you can give together you can pray and give so i have these cards if you want to think about praying and giving and if you want to think about joining tier fund as a member which i did uh, 2009 there after that um, visit to india and there's a grace in giving so um those are the cards and of course, giving as a community, giving as individuals, it helps Leona and many communities around the world. So um, I'm going to end there. Um, I'll be about here if anybody wants to chat. And we have a last praise piece, and then we'll have a benediction from Ronnie. So this is Yet Not I. Yet Not I, but Christ in me. Yes, Yet Not I. So let's sing together.
Father, you have spoken to us as we have sung your praise. You have fed us on the truth of your word. You have challenged us to show compassion. Lord, to share the riches that we have been blessed with. To reach out in your holy name. So now, Lord, as we leave this place, send us in your resurrection power to live for you, to show love, and to share your truth. Now may grace, mercy, and peace from God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.